Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King of This is amazing craze This is unfailing love That you would take my place
All right, great, Ryan. Thank you very much. Yes. So, good morning, Grace. Good morning again. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. The stone has been rolled away and the tomb is empty. The Christ has, is risen and he's risen indeed. I'm so glad that you are here today to worship with us and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I, I hope this one-hour one, uh, one hour service will be a great and meaningful time for all of you. Uh, and God has something special for you today. And I hope you all experience what God has for you today. Um, in, in, in history, in church history, and traditionally, after Jesus rose from the dead and church gathered, together, and then they celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ every Sunday. Actually, every Sunday is Easter. Did you know that? And so church leaders like pastors and priests, every Sunday morning they get together with the congregation, and they said they proclaimed Christ is risen, and all the congregation responded, He is risen indeed. Oh, you did already. I was about to do that. So, <laughs> all right. All right, with life and joy and energy that God has given us this morning, the Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Now would you rise and join me in singing, Christ the Lord is risen today. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for Easter. We thank you for the triumph of Jesus Christ over sin and death. We thank you that light has overcome darkness. We thank you for your love and grace that has overcome evil and hate and brokenness in this world. And we pray that you will help us today to experience hope and power of resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone agreed and said, Amen. Amen. Rob will lead us into call to worship. Good morning. I'm Rob Wandell. Please join me in the call to worship. Out of darkness of grief and despair comes a message of hope. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We run to the tomb and see for ourselves. And it is true, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We hear a voice call our name, and we know our risen Lord is with us now and always.
empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He is alive. And oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Forever I'm changed. When I stand in that place, free at last, meeting face to face, I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. Endless joy and perfect peace, earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. He is alive, and oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away, oh, happy day. Happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I've changed. Oh, what a glorious day.
You may be seated. Um, I have some announcement to share. Um, we have set up an Easter photo booth in the gathering pla place. Um, so after service, you feel free to take a family, uh, photo with families and friends. Um, it's beautiful. You know, there was a backdrop in the gathering place with, 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 with uh, beautiful flowers. I don't know if it's a flower or, or something. Anyway, it's, it's a beautiful art. And when you take a photo with that, well, when you see the backdrop, it looks just normal, just something regular. But when you take a photo, it's going to be beautiful, right? <laughs> Trust me. Oh, it's like a 3D something, right? It's like a magic. So I don't want you to miss that photo booth uh, uh, with your families and friends. Um, and uh, we have something special and fun, actually, um, this coming uh, uh, next month in April, uh, United, Method United Methodist Women, not fr sorry, United Women of Faith, um, um, hosting a program called Gain, Strength, and Improve Balance with Tai Chi. Tai Chi. It's going to be fun, and it will help you to balance your body. Um, and next Sunday after service, our youth group... Um, will offer spaghetti lunch as a fundraiser for their uh, summer mission trip. Um, and tomorrow, this week, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're going to uh, start a new study with this book by Adam Hamilton called Wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith. Um, I think this, this book uh, will be a great study for uh, many of us, including me. Because uh, I, 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 I also doubt. <laughs> but I, I'm a pastor, but I have a lot of questions. And this book will help me to answer, um, to find answer to, to many questions. All right. Um, um, and we're going to uh, offer a dementia and memory loss um, to help people who are struggling with it and who are caregivers. So if you're interested in and if you need help, just um, I, I, I hope you, are, uh, you come and um, learn something from that. And um, we're going to have a, a vacation of Bible school. Um, it's the, the theme will be at the farm, growing in God's love from June 24 to uh, June, June 27. So just uh, give you a heads up. So I hope your kids, your grandkids will be there and, and learn Christian love and Christian teaching and kindness through that program. Um, we have a um, connection card in your pew, so if you are here first time at Grace, I won't, I, I, I won't, this won't be the last time. And uh, if you uh, leave us, or your, uh, just leave us some of your information, um, and so let us know you're here, it, it will be appreciated. In the back of that card, there is a, a um, space that you can leave us your prayer requests, so we'll pray for you. Uh, and if you're, you're here first time today, uh, we have uh, this mug for you. So after service, I don't want you to miss this mug. I will get it to you. Um, let me share some prayer requests. Um, Jack Dawson asked us prayer, uh, to pray for his brother Mark as he uh, went in for long surgery, uh, long cancer surgery this week. Pray for Kendra and her sisters as they are looking for nursing home and rehab places for their father, Donald. Um, and Connie Klopp, uh, she's been in hospice care uh, for, for a few weeks, and she passed away this past Monday. So please pray for um, Klopp family. And we also pray for um, the city of Rockford. Um, that um, tragedy happened this week. Uh, we pray for the, um, the families and friends of victims and who are injured. So let's pray, friends. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of new life, the gift of Jesus Christ, and the mystery of the resurrection. As we reflect on the significance of Easter, help us to remember that your power is greater than any challenge we may face. Strengthen us with your spirit that we may live lives that honor you and reflect the light of Christ to the world around us. 
We pray for family and friends, for situations near and far, and those who are hurting, lonely, or facing difficult circumstances. We pray for your blessings on our city of Rockford. Help us overcome evil and bad with love and goodness. Help us anchor our hope found in the empty tomb, in the midst of pains and cries. May those who are mourning find comfort and solace in the resurrection of your Son, knowing that He is with them always and with us always, offering peace and healing. May the saving presence of our loving God sustain us and strengthen our neighborhoods and our communities. Now we take time to pray in our own silent prayers. Friends, now let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for children. Children, and i like to invite youth, because I need your help. So youth and children, would you come up? All right. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Did you find many eggs this morning? Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. So, friends, actually, Easter is a very happy day, isn't it? It's a happy day. Yes. It's the day that we celebrate what? Easter. Yes. The bunny. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Easter eggs and bunny, absolutely. But today, we gather together to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's interesting to think about what Jesus' friends, hey, hey, van, 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 van. It's very interesting, I think, to think about what Jesus' friends, the friends of Jesus, might have, might have been feeling on that day. 2,000 years ago, the first Easter, what might have the friends of Jesus felt, right? We all know our faces. Our faces show the way we feel. Uh, sometimes we try to hide it, but we are not always so great to hide uh, hiding how we feel. Today, I don't want you to hide it, okay? And as I tell you a story, the Easter story, I want you to show on your faces how the people in the story feel about what is happening. You got that? Yeah. You all right? And I have five faces. So let me see. Katie, would you help me? Yeah. Haley, you just sit over here. You two sit over here. And I have two. Kel, Kel, Taylor. Oh, Jaden, come on. You sit over here. And... Hold it up, all right? 
I'm going to read the story of Easter. All right. Oh, there we go. And you can point it with your finger what face they might have had when this happened. All right. Are you ready? Did you get that? All right. So you hold it up so that everybody can see. So this is, oh, what emotion this face represents, do you think? Yes, yeah. Zoe. Shocked, panicked, right? What about this? Yeah. Mad, angry. What about this? Happy. Happy. What about Haley's? Tired. <laughs> Tired. Let me see. I was expecting you to say disappointed. Haley, hold, hold it up so that people behind can see. Tired, yes. What about Katie's? Sad, right? All right, let me read now the story of Easter morning uh, revealed in the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. Let's go. It was early in the morning on the first day of the week when some women went to visit the tomb where their friend Jesus had been buried. He had been crucified and died on a cross. So, can you imagine what face their friends had when they heard Jesus was crucified and dead? What face? Tired, Van? <laughs> Show me your face, tired. All right, all right. I think they were probably this, shocked. And some of them might angry and tired, okay? <laughs> All right, the next scene. When they arrived, the disciples arrived at the tomb of the women. The women discovered that the stone had been covered, the entrance had been rolled away. What do you think? Yeah. Their face. <laughs> Hold it up. Shock again? Yeah, shock. What about you, Harrison? You said tired. Tired again? <laughs> they are still tired. All right. Number three. When they looked inside the tomb, they had the biggest surprise of all. The tomb was empty. They thought someone had stolen Jesus' body. What? What face do you think? Tired again? <laughs> angry? Oh, yes. I think so. They are angry. Somebody took Jesus' body, right? All right, number four. Suddenly, two men in bright, shining clothes came and stood beside the women. In their fright, they bowed down with their faces to the ground. Someone in Two men in bright, shining clothes showed up. What do you think? They were, they might have been shocked again. Shocked. Tired again. They are shocked, right? Okay, they are shocked, surprised, I think. All right, number five. The man spoke to the women and said, Jesus is not here. He has risen. Don't you remember what he told you when he was in Galilee? He has risen. What do you think? I don't think so. Yeah? Sad? I don't think so. Happy. I guess happy. Yes. Number six. The women remembered what Jesus has told them and they were no longer afraid. Their fear turned to happiness, and they went back and told Jesus' disciples what they had seen and that Jesus had risen. What? Yes, happy. They are happy that Jesus has risen. So friends, you and I have reason to be happy about today. We are happy because Jesus has risen, and also we are happy that we know that the Bible tells us that Whoever believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. 
Now, this is something to be happy about, isn't it? Yes, Easter. Jesus is risen. He's risen indeed. So now, would you close your eyes, bow your head, head, fold your hands? Let's pray. Dear God, we are happy today because Jesus rose from the day, rose from the dead. And we are also happy because we know that those who believe in him will also live forever with him. We pray it in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Now, do you stand? What dirt. dirt? I know, I know. Tammy, you look great today. Awesome. Bless these children. Would you stretch out your hands? Let's bless these children. Go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord fill your heart with joy and give you wisdom and peace. Amen. Amen. Let's bless our children with our hands. Thank you for help. Thank you.
I invite the usher to come forward with today's offering. Please join me in your offering. Living God, pour your power on your people this day that our lives may reflect the gift we have received through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. With deepest gratitude for your many gifts, particularly the gift of your Son, we offer you our offerings this day. May these gifts be used to bring new life and hope as they are used to give a new life for others. In the name of the resurrected one, we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. The word of God for the people of God. We need to buy another one, right? Yeah, yeah taller one. Um, <clears throat> So I, I was born and grew up in South Korea and came to the United States when I was 25 after graduating from college. Um, when, I was, when I was young, one of my bucket lists was to go to watch Major League Baseball game. Because I loved to watch the games on TV in Korea. I was thinking, it, it's going to be fantastic to go to the game, uh, to go to uh, see the game and to see the world best players in person in the stadium. And you know, many of you know, I, I'm a Dodgers fan. And, and when I came to Chicago in 2008 to begin my master's degree, I decided to go uh, to watch a baseball game, and my dream was about to come true. But I didn't know much about the baseball teams in Chicago, and soon I realized that, that I should choose one team between um, the two. And so I started searching for the tickets on the internet, and I found out that the White Sox tickets were much cheaper than the Cubs tickets. <laughs> well, um, I, I was an international student. I had no job. I couldn't afford to buy expensive tickets. And so I bought the White Sox ticket for the cheapest seats, all the way up in the 500 level. Uh, well, actually, uh, when I got there, I, it, it felt like sitting in a 5 million level. Um, and oh my goodness, from up there, players look like a Lego. Anyway, we enjoyed the game. That was a great game. There was a grand, grand slam, and White Sox won 9-7. to seven. I don't know who, who they opposed, but anyway, um, they won. And I was fascinated. And then I became a White Sox fan. Actually, after that, I had a chance to go to Wrigley Field with free promotion tickets uh, from our school, but it didn't change my mind. I have no problem with Cubbies, but I prefer the White Sox team among the Chicago teams. The reason is simple. The White Sox tickets were cheaper than the Cubs tickets. <laughs> and the White Sox game was my first experience. It was my first experience. So sometimes I think, what if I went to the Cubs game first? What if I had more money to buy Cubs tickets? Maybe I would have been a Cubs fan, all right? My first experience with the White Sox game caused me to be a White Sox fan over Cubs, Chicago Cubs, and I don't think it would change. But well, I'm still a diehard Dodgers fan since I was young. Well, my son Harrison and my family actually, especially my son Harrison is a Dodgers fan too. You know why? because he was born to a parents who are Dodgers fan. And when I watch Dodgers games, he has been watching them with me, always. Harrison didn't even have a chance to consider other teams. 
Dodgers was just given to him. And I'm sure he will be a lifetime Dodgers fan. What about you, friends? What about you? Let me ask you, how many of you, how many of you are a Chicago Cubs fan or a Chicago Bears fan because you were born and grew up in Illinois? Okay, you don't, you don't need to hands up. <laughs> how many of you are Green Bay Packers fan because your parents were Packers fan? Right? Some of you? I believe many of you. How many of you are forcing, forcing your kids to be a Packers fan? <laughs> right? And how many of you are a White Sox fan because you are poor? <laughs> right? Well, oh, some of you, I saw some, some hands up actually. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, now um, let me ask you a little more serious question. How many of you think you're a Christian because your parents were Christians and took you to church on Sunday morning? How many of you, how many of you think you're a Christian because you were born and grew up in America, not in Saudi, Saudi Arabia or Syria or Afghanistan? Let me tell you my story. I was born a Christian because my parents were Christians. I went to church because my parents took me to church every, mo every Sunday morning. I had no choice to do something else on Sunday morning. Sunday morning was just church time. No other option, no negotiation. And I think I was a good Christian. I was a religious kid. I had daily devotion. I read the Bible and prayed every day a certain amount of time. I gave to church my offering and tithe. I went on mission trip. I, was, uh, I got involved uh, in many youth mission projects. And um, when I was young, as many of you know, I experienced God's miracle. I was terribly sick when rheumatoid arthritis hit me. And I experienced the miraculous power of God's healing. I thought I was a good Christian. I was an experienced Christian. But when I, when I, when I went to college, when I was mature enough to question and think rationally and logically about faith and religions with my head, with my mind, this kind of thought came to my mind. What if I was born into a Jewish family? What if I was born into a Muslim family? Would I still be a Christian? What if my first experience with religion was not the church, but the Islamic mosque or a Jewish temple? Would I still go to church on Sunday morning, believing the God of the Bible? I questioned my religion, and I was very confused. What about you, friends? Am I, the only, oh, am I the only person in this room who struggle with these kind of questions? And some atheist friends of mine challenged me like this. All religions are basically the same. They just call the same God with different names. Christianity is simply one philosophy among many. There are many paths to God, and all paths will ultimately lead to the same God. So, you don't have to hold on to Christianity. Don't need to. Don't waste your time. And it was then when I started doubting my Christian faith. I found the Christian faith was so irrelevant to my life. It didn't make sense to me how someone who was born and lived 2,000 years ago in Palestine in a place at least 5,000 miles away from Korea, could have any relevance to my life today. Does it make sense that God sent His Son to save the world and He came as a baby, born in a manger, animal stable, and His crib was a manger, a feeding trough, where animals ate, dirty, smelly, how can I believe that he died on a cross to pay the price for my sins and for the sins of the world? And you've got to be kidding me. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. 
and he's my Lord and Savior. How can I believe that? It, it's just irrelevant to my life. It didn't make sense to me at all. And it was then when I started feeling the church was boring. Oh my goodness, it was boring. So boring to sing slow, old school songs. And I got sick of being told what I could and couldn't do by pastors who were conservative, stubborn, and judgmental. Everything about Christianity and church just seemed so goofy. <laughs> but this is interesting. At a certain point during that period of time where I was wrestling with faith and doubt, I strangely felt that I was hungry. I was hungry, which was not physically. It was something different. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why. I felt like there was a hole inside me. Something was missing in life. And I tried, but I couldn't make up that hole in me. I didn't know at the time, but sometime later, I learned that I was not the only person who experienced that kind of hunger. And I found that people are always look, looking forward to a next thing in life rather than living for the present, believing, believing there must be something more to life than this. People are never satisfied with what they have. We, are all, we, we always ask, what's next? We are a desiring creature. Well, have you ever been in McDonald's with little kids? Uh, we go to McDonald's for lunch, uh, but the kids get always greeted by a little toy, some marketing genius named Happy Meal, right? As soon as they see it, they think, Oh, I must have it. I don't think I could live without it. Can I get it, Daddy? They look me in the eyes. And they say, I want that Happy Meal more than I've ever wanted anything before. And if I get it, I will never ask for anything again, ever. No more complaining. No more demanding. I'll do all the chores you ask me to do. If you get me that Happy Meal, I'll be content for the rest of my life. It sounds like a good deal to me, right? And so I would buy it for them, and it worked for a few minutes, right? And sometime later, we go to McDonald's again, and they are gripped again by another toy, and they will say, oh, I must have it. I don't think I could live without it. Can I get it, Daddy? And I would buy it again. And that's how Ronald McDonald's has sold billions of Happy Meals, right? My question is this, is it true? Is it true? Once kids have the happy meal, they never complain. They are never depressed again, but are content and grateful for the rest of their lives? No, of course not. They are thinking, what's next? When we get to McDonald's, what's next? That's human nature. We are... We are a desiring creature. When we get there, we find it doesn't satisfy. And so we see a bigger house, better car, more money, more knowledge, more experience, more vacation, and promotion, and so. Well, I like this question. There are two guys. One guy has, one, guy has one million dollars, and the other guy has 12 children. Who do you think will feel more satisfied? The guy who has 12 kids. Why? He wants no more, right? <laughs> when you have one million dollars, you're not going to be satisfied. But guy who has a 12 kids, no more. That's it. We, that's enough. Now we are living in a world where our living conditions, wealth, health, food, education, technology, are way better than ever in the history of the human race. We can access to any kinds of information in the world just in a few seconds. And we can find out what's going on on the other side of the world. You can connect with anybody on the planet Earth by airplane. We can go wherever we want to go within 24 hours on this planet Earth. We live longer, 
eat better, dress warmer and nicely more than ever in the history of the human race. Most of you have a, a something called this. Where's that tiny little thing? Smartphone, right? This is magical. It's kind of magical. You can send a signal up in the air, and it comes back down, and by the push of a button, a pizza guy shows up at your door. <laughs> you can read and watch and listen and order whatever you want with this tiny little stuff. You can connect with anybody. You can save money. You can send money to anybody with this tiny little one. And that's how incredibly blessed we are. And yet, so many times, we are still hungry. What's next? People are dissatisfied. And we are looking forward to what's next. And you know, it was true for people who lived a hundred years ago and a thousand years ago. And it will still remain the same for people who are a hundred years and a thousand years from today. Because there is a hole in our, in our beings. Every one of us. The hole that cannot be satisfied by things we can buy at a shopping mall or by experiences we can get through a gorgeous vacation or any political agenda. It's a crazy year, right? By political leaders and political agenda. You think your whole, your hunger will be satisfied by them. But it's not. Because, because we are a spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings created in the image of God. And Jesus once said this, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. If you come to me, you will never be hungry again. I am the one who can satisfy that spiritual hunger that's in every human heart, everybody, and that can never be fulfilled by anything else. Well, I heard about a little girl. <clears throat> she asked her mom, Mom, how did the human, human, human race get, start, uh, get started? The mother explained how God made Adam and Eve, and they had children on, children on and on and on, and here we are today. A few days later, she asked her father the same question, and he explained, many years ago, there were monkeys. But little by little, they became more like people, and now here we are today. She was confused and went back to her mom and said, Mom, you said God created people, but Daddy said we came from monkey. How could that be? She said, Oh, honey, that's easy. I told you about my side of the family. He told you about his. <laughs> well, friends, we are more than monkeys. There is something more to human life than bananas. If you really came from a monkey, you would be satisfied by a bunch of bananas, right? And you would live like a monkey. But we are not. We are spiritual beings created in the image of God. And we are made for a relationship with God. And so only God who created us can fulfill that spiritual hunger. If you believe that someone who's beyond your understanding, who's beyond someone who's beyond your control and power, much more powerful and much wiser than you, really created you in a specific purpose and has given you a spiritual gift for his purpose, you will need a relationship with him to satisfy your unsatisfied hunger. Until you find it, until you admit that, and find the spiritual gift that God has given you for His purpose, you're going to be hungry. People who lived a thousand years ago experienced that hungry. We are hungry. People a hundred and thousand years from today will be hungry if they cannot find that purpose. So, that is your choice, friends. Are you going to live like a monkey or are you going to live 
as a child of God, that is your choice. You have a decision to make. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am, my bread is different from the bread that the world gives you because it reaches a depth that nothing else, that no one else can touch. Do you remember in the first Easter morning, the reason Christ visited his disciples who were behind the locked doors, who were afraid and angry and disappointed and discouraged and who were tired? And the reason Jesus appeared to them and he sat at the table with them and took the bread and he broke it and gave it to them saying, do you remember this? This is my body which is broken for you. And by doing it, Jesus reminded them, I am the living bread. I'll feed your hunger that will never be satisfied in any other way. And then a few, uh, and a few days later, another day, the risen Christ appeared again to the disciples early in the morning by the Sea of Galilee. And he prepared breakfast for them and said, come and eat. He took the bread and he gave it to them. By the way, why did he do that? Why food again and again and again? Well, somebody said, Jesus must be a Methodist because he loved to eat. But, well, why food? Because he wanted to remind people, I am the bread of life to feed your hunger that will never be satisfied in any other way. Go try it. And come back to me. I'm open. The door is open. You just come. I'm ready for you. And friends, this morning, the reason Christ comes to you and knocks the door of your heart. The Bible says this. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and what? Eat again. He must be a Methodist. Eat with them and they with me. Horman Hunt, I'll end message with this. Horman Hunt, a British painter back in the 19th century, painted a picture to illustrate this verse with a painting called uh, The Light of the World. Well, um, the painting on your right is the original painting, The Light of the World. And the other one on your left, you all know these paintings, right? And in this painting, you see Jesus standing at the door of someone's house and knocking. But there's something strange in this, in this painting. There's no handle on the door. When people said, Hey, Horman Hunt, you made a big mistake. Horman Hunt answered, that's not a mistake. There is a handle, but it's on the inside. It's on the inside. The door is locked on the inside. No one can open the door for you but you. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock and just wait. It's your choice. If you hear my voice and open the door, this is a promise I will come in and be a part of your life. I will feed you and satisfy your spiritual hunger. You with me, I with you. Friends, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, I'm glad that you are here today. And now you have another invitation from Jesus. On this 2024 Easter Sunday morning, the risen Christ comes back and knocks on the door, the door of your heart. Would you open it? Would you let him in to feed your hunger? Now, friends, um, would you stand? And let us sing together. By the way, um, we start our study, new study with this book. 
uh, from tomorrow, tomorrow evening at 6.30, uh, and Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, and Thursday 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, this study book deals with a lot of questions, like, is there a God, really? Chapter 2, chapter two the, the, the Bible, wrestling with the Bible, is it really good? Are all non-Christians going to hell? Really? Non-Christians are going to hell? Is heaven real? When our prayers with pure heart go unanswered, why do the innocent suffer? Why do innocent people suffer? We're going to study together, discuss it, and I hope all of us to find answers, not the perfect, the whole answer for these questions. But God will speak to you through the study. And next Sunday, uh, over the next two Sundays, we are going to talk about spiritual gifts. Gifts. God, when God created you, God had a sp specific and particular purpose for your life. And did you know that God has given you a specific, particular spiritual gifts? to fulfill his dream in your life and purpose in your life. So we are going to study together and explore the God's gifts um, in our lives. Um, so I hope you come back. I hope you join us uh, for these services and study. And now let us sing together this hymn, Because It Lives. Before I um, offer the benediction and um, let you go, I'd I like to uh, recognize today a very special person. Um, this, is, this was actually his uh, last Sunday worship. Um, 
at grace. Rob, would you just come? Yeah. I, I know it's, it's a cry of joy because God has called Rob to a ministry and he has been assigned um, to a local church called Capron. Capron United Methodist Church is our neighbor. It's not that far. It's only about uh, 20 miles. 50 miles east. It's a 50, 50 miles. 15. 15, 15, yes, miles yes. East, yeah. 15 miles east of our church. And we like to recognize him and we love to bless him. Uh, and um, Bob, Carol, come forward, please. Bob um, used to serve church in Capro as a local pastor. And Bob encouraged him while um, Rob was thinking, uh, is it the is, is it really God? You, you called me. Is it, is it true, God? I can't believe that. I'm 60-something years old. I'm, I'm not going to say that. And, never too old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what he told me. <laughs> and Bob was there for him, helped him, gave him confidence, and helped him to be bold to answer God's call. Um, thank you. Rob, do you have something to sh tell us or share with us? I know it's hard. It is hard. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I, uh, I made the decision to come to Grace. It was a tough decision for me because my wife attends at Court Street United Methodist, uh, but I wasn't getting anything out of that service anymore. Uh, it just didn't relate to me. Uh, so I, I was offered an invitation to come here, and uh, I came here, and it's, it's uh, yeah, although it still causes issues between me and my wife, we, uh, <clears throat> it's, I'm, I couldn't be more thankful that I made that decision. Uh, God called me here, and I wouldn't be going uh, into serving a, uh, a church of my own if it wasn't for that. The, uh, the mentoring I got in this church has been unbelievable, and uh, I thank you all. It's been a pleasure to be here. All right. So, lay leader Steve, would you come forward? Rob, we want to, and anyone who loves Rob um, um, and who's been with him in ministry, I want to uh, invite you to come forward and lay your hands. This, um, yeah, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, some of you from um, choir. Hmm. I know it's um, not easy for you, um, many of you. So. Let's pray, friends. Would you, would you, would you friends, um, stretch out your hands as a gesture of blessings? Gracious and loving God, you are holy. You are gracious. And you created us in your image, and you made us in a particular and specific purpose for our lives. And you want us to seek it and find it and commit our lives to you, Lord. Today we celebrate Rob Wandell, that he has found your call, and he answered yes to your call, Lord. And now he's going into, he's entering into a new chapter of his life, serving your local church, the body of Jesus Christ. Bless him, Lord. Strengthen him. Empower him. Give him your wisdom and boldness and confidence that you are alive and you are still working in our lives and you are seeking a lot of people come to you and you are ready to feed them with your bread. Lord, bless and, um, and empower Rob as they feed the sheep. Your sheep, Lord, be with him. And I pray for the people in um, Shepron. She um, um, be with them, Lord, and bless them. And Lord, bless Grace Church. Continue to bless Grace Church. And so we are thriving. And we are going to be vital. And we will have people in this room that who will answer your call with yes, Lord. I commit my life to you. And to go out and serve people you have called. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and love and your call in our lives. We love you, Lord. That's why we are here. 
That's why we surrender our lives to you, to glorify you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone agreed and said, Amen. Amen. All right, Ralph. Yes. So friends, you go out to the world and be the messenger, messengers of Easter. Christ has risen and is risen indeed. People may see in your life the Christ who's risen indeed. Be kind, serve others, commit your lives to God's call in your life. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, life-giving and life-changing power of the Holy Spirit be with us all the time, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody.